This is the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Now about eight days after these sayings, Jesus took with him Peter and John and James and went up on the mountain to pray. And while he was praying, the appearance of his face changed and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly they saw two men, Moses and Elijah, talking to him. They appeared in glory and were speaking of his departure, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now Peter and his companions were weighed down with sleep, but since they had stayed awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. Just as they were leaving him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah, not knowing what he said. While he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were terrified as they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, this is my son, my chosen, listen to him. When the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. And they kept silent, and in those days told no one any of the things they had seen. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. I invite you to be seated. In a tumultuous and turbulent world filled with discord and strife, things can be heavy, uh, including you know, the rewriting of uh, words for you today throughout the weekend as situations developed. And yet, I know, I know that God has a good word of good news to speak to a world like this. I know that God has a good word of good news to speak to me and to you all today because I know that it is by God's mercy that we are engaged in this ministry of being the heart and hands and feet of Jesus in a hurting world. And so we do not lose heart because the glory of the Lord has been revealed to us time and time again in the very midst of of things like death and destruction, for God is God who brings life from death. God is God who creates something from nothing. And so let's talk for a minute about this revealing of God's glory, this transfiguration, right? This is another, uh, in some ways, a repetition and in some ways an, an even stronger affirmation and revelation of Jesus' identity, Again, it should remind us of Jesus' baptism when the Holy Spirit descended into him and a voice from heaven called out, this is my beloved son. And here again, it is revealed that Jesus is God's son and Jesus, in fact, shines with the very glory of God. You know, the same glory that Moses' face shines with after Moses has met with God face to face in the cloud on Sinai. It radiates not just from the face of Jesus, but from his whole presence. You see transfiguration, right? It's a change in outward appearance. And this transfiguration of Jesus is a change in outward appearance that reveals the true identity of who he is. The very glory of God shining in and through him is more clearly seen in this moment of transfiguration. Changed and still God's beloved son. Still exactly who he was made to be. Do you know what, as I mentioned in our connection to the font and our own baptism, but also as you, I am sure, know, God is revealed in you too. In those moments when we live out our faith, as we live among God's faithful people, as we hear the, God, the word of the Lord proclaimed and share in the Lord's Supper as we serve all people following the example of Jesus, as we strive for justice and peace in all the earth, as we proclaim the good news of God and Christ through word and deed, God is revealed in you. 
The glory of the Lord shines in and through you. It is revealed in you and reflected on you as you live out those things, as you strive for justice and peace, as we are transfigured and marked with the love of God, having encountered the fullness of God's presence in water and in the word and at the table, having encountered the fullness of God's presence, we shine with God's glory. We are still us. You are still you. You are changed. God is revealed in us. And each opportunity, then God fills us with the Spirit and enables us to live out these gifts of the faith. God is revealed even more apparently in you. We see God's glory. You know, there's this great uh, litany that we use uh, that was already in your liturgy here at Spirit in the Hills when I came to be your pastor uh, during the Christmas Eve service, right? It talks about uh, we see God's glory revealed in the light of candles. We see God's glory in the people gathered to sing. We see God's glory in one another and in those who are pushed to the outside, because Jesus always moves toward them, and we can find Jesus there too. These baptismal promises to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God proclaimed and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in the earth. They are what we live out to be the light and love of God, called to be peacemakers in a world that all too often chooses war. Called to bring wholeness into a world that likes to set up divisions. Called in our, and proclaiming in our baptism that we renounce all that is at work against God and instead turn and follow God's way of love and of peace again and again and again. Because God is in and through us. And in God works in you and through you. God has revealed clearly when we can live into these promises together by the grace of God given to us. We come together as one body, not losing heart because God's mercy is why we are engaged in this work. As we forgive our neighbors, as we choose peace, as we are freed to love God and to love our neighbor as ourself rather than treating some of our neighbors as second class or third class citizens. God has love and a word of saving grace for this world. And God wants and empowers you to speak and act it. God has placed God's word and God's peace, God's glory within you and is empowering you to speak it and act it out that people might see a transfigured people and a transfigured world led by peace and love. Because all too often it seems too easy to see that violence and war are the way. But Jesus, the Prince of Peace, shows us another and you are invited and given the opportunity to live that other way too. It's hard to know what to do and we begin and end in prayer for this world that God so loves, but we know also that God so loves this world and that God's love brings life again and again and again, even in the throes of death. So we pray. Holy and gracious God, you are the light of the world and the same word that speaks, let there be light, shines on us today. Let us hear that word Let us feel that shalom and glory. Let us live as your peacemakers, taking peace with us where we go and helping to make it a reality, knowing that you are a God of shalom, of wholeness, and that you, God, cannot be stopped by anything, no powers or principalities, no powers of life or death. So let us be clear to renounce those things at work in the world pulling us from you, working against your mission. And let us be even quicker to not lose heart, 
to receive your mercy and to share it abundantly as we live your way of peace and love in the world through Jesus Christ, revealed to us again in glory this day. Amen.